Things are shorter and things are running a little more smoothly at security at McCarran today. Coming up on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 4, we'll take you live to the airport for the latest. Security officials are confiscating all kinds of items now banned from flights. We'll show you what's being done with them. And big changes are planned for the Las Vegas Strip. We'll check out what might be changed and what might change the landscape along Las Vegas Boulevard. Security lines at McCarran Airport are moving a lot more smoothly today after yesterday's terror threat created chaos in both America and Europe. Today it's almost business as usual, but it is still heightened security today. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll have the latest on security operations at McCarran in a minute, but first we're learning more about the suspects accused of plotting to blow up nearly a dozen planes over America. The 24 suspects in custody are British born Muslims. Today, one was released. Intelligence officials believe the ringleader was operating from the outside. It appears that one of the Britons arrested has has ties to Al Qaeda. Scotland Yard believes he has been working with the terrorist group at its base in Afghanistan. The other suspects include a pregnant woman, a child, and a Heathrow Airport employee. British authorities are interrogating some two dozen suspects, but they say they fear more people are connected to the plot and have not been caught. Karen Airport officials are thanking travelers for their patience and for complying with the new restrictions on liquids. The same restrictions are in place today, but there aren't the major delays or long lines that we saw yesterday. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Kai Plascon is at McCarran. Kai, what changed today? Gary, it's just not as busy of a day. There aren't as many people trying to leave Las Vegas as there are coming. On a Friday, it's a very popular place to come. You can see that there are people planning to leave. There are a couple people up there on the catwalk right now. They do have to deal with some of the same restrictions. And earlier today, it was still a pretty busy place up there. It was gridlock yesterday for hours as each person was stopped and searched for any banned liquids. So if you left folks, D-gauge, baggage claim. Today it's moving a little faster, but it was still busy with the new restrictions. That side, it's pretty hectic. As you can see, a lot of people coming and going. Daryl Sagawa was called off his usual job to direct passengers. I manage, oversee uh, construction projects. Wow. Yeah, the airport. This construction manager is now handling crowds. We just come out, uh, volunteer to help us with crowd control. Yeah, escort yourself before security. Yes, you have to. He's at the back of a line directing more than 1,000 passengers an hour, like Dale Brevik and Lorette Shaw. They're entering the line and don't know what to expect after yesterday. Concerned a little bit, to be honest with you. You know, I've heard a lot of stories about a lot of delays, and uh, we don't want to be delayed. We want to get on that plane. They're ready with all their banned liquids packed away. So far, so good. We just haven't gotten the line yet. But we'll know in a little while. We followed them through the line. Yesterday's wait was four hours. Today's 20 minutes. Well, to be honest, it looks pretty good. It looks like they've got things organized, and I've seen longer lines when it's a normal flight. Airport officials told us once they make it through Sunday, they'll consider developing a longer term plan for how to deal with the new restrictions. Now, we were just up there just a couple of minutes ago, and there were no lines whatsoever. Now, the reason why the officials are waiting for Sunday is that they're thinking that on Sunday, a lot of people are going to want to leave Las Vegas again, and the lines could be back. We're live at McCarran International Airport, the Zero Level, Kai Plaskon, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Kai. All those liquids and gels that travelers are having to throw into the trash include some expensive lotions and perfumes. Some people are questioning where the items will wind up. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Reporter Martha Guzman is at McCarran with that part of the story. Martha. Good afternoon. Now, we received uh, an email from a concerned viewer suggesting that at least one TSA agent had gone through the discarded items and taken a perfume bottle. But a TSA spokesperson tells us that the, the TSA agents are held to a high standard and they're prohibited from going from through any of those discarded items. So one employee here at the airport told us that uh, th those items are going right into the trash and the trash here never smelled so good. Reminders of the new security measures are everywhere at McCarran Airport. Airline employees are also warning passengers before going through the gate. No liquids or gels through security. 
Hundreds of trash cans line the gates for those who forget to put their liquid and gel items in checked luggage. Inside the cans, you'll find lotions, hairspray, and half full water bottles. Takami Ng usually travels with hand sanitizers and lotions because of her young daughter, but not today. I just packed everything just to check in so that I won't have to throw things away. Pat Lucasen also prefers to travel with her cosmetic essentials. Your hand lotion and lipstick and all your makeup, but not this time. Airport officials say passengers can also mail their items to themselves, but many are opting to just toss them in the trash. I heard some lady, she was complaining because she was dumping her expensive uh, you know, lotions and stuff for her face in the trash. The most common item we saw passengers throwing away were still drinks such as soda and water. Goodbye. <laughs> Now, a TSA spokesperson tells me that most of the discarded items are thrown away, but some airports can choose to salvage some of the items and donate them to charity. Here at McCarran Airport, the federal security director tells me that most of what they've been seeing are discarded uh, half-used shampoo bottles and lotions. So for sanitary reasons, they will not be donating those to any charities, and they'll stay right in the trash. We're live here at McCarran International Airport. Martha Guzman, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Martha. The new security measures will stay in place until the TSA decides they are no longer necessary. You can find a complete list of restricted items on our website, klastv.com. Will this terrorist plot cause a dip in international travel? A new survey from the world's largest travel comp community on the web, 47% of the people questioned said they would avoid traveling between the U.S. and the United Kingdom over the next two months. TripAdvisor.com surveyed more than 1,200 people to come up with that number. It might also have an effect on Las Vegas tourism. Gaming experts say it's probably too early to tell that. Over the last two months, though, we have seen a drop in visitor volume and gaming revenues, a possible sign that the economy is losing some steam. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Ted Florendo joins us with the story. Ted. Well, Gary, the numbers tell the story. Take a look. Strip casino gaming wins from gamblers are down 7% from June of this year compared to the same time last year. The number of visitors who came to town in June are also down 2% from June of 2005. Now, keep in mind, last year was a record-breaking year for tourism. Now, while experts and analysts are still trying to pinpoint the root cause, they say it could be a combination of things. It's 10 a.m. and Richard Brochard and his wife are itching to check out the Strip. She loves to gamble and this is a place she wanted to go. This is their fifth trip to Las Vegas, but it's a trip they won't be taking as often in the future. We'd like to, but I mean, just driving here from Sacramento one way was $400 in gas, so it's probably going to limit our trips here, most definitely. It's too expensive to fly. Too many kids to haul in a car, and so this RV is his only solution. But now it's those gas prices that will keep his cash and vacation away from here and closer to home. There's no question that a major impact is the cost of gasoline. Ray Poirier, gaming analyst with Gaming Today, is adamant the decline in gaming revenue and tourists to Las Vegas is because of gas prices. People are going to pay the $3 a gallon, no question. But when they fill up and it costs them $50, $70, $80 a month or whatever, as this accumulates on their credit cards, it impacts their discretionary spending. The Las Vegas Visitors and Convention Authority also agree the rise in prices could be the reason for the 2% decline in tourists the last two months. But talking with gaming analyst Poirier, he's not worried. He's confident the new casinos under construction now will bring in more visitors. The LVCVA uh, says the decline could also be attributed to fewer conventions this year, fewer concerts and big boxing events. And while earnings are down on the Strip, they're also down in other casinos as well in North Las Vegas, Boulder Highway and Laughlin too. Reporting live, Ted Florendo, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Ted, thanks. The troubled Las Vegas Housing Authority met this afternoon to discuss the resignation of its executive director. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. I-team reporter Mark Sayer has the story. Mark. Well, Paula, we learned a short time ago that former executive director Parviz Gadiri has quite a final paycheck coming. Now, Gadiri has been with the Housing Authority in all for 17 years, executive director since 2002. Just a few moments ago, the board voted to accept his resignation and will pay him $70,000 on the way out the door here, most of that in unused sick time. The board chair also encouraged those here today to read all of that recent highly critical federal audit. This is a very emotional time for everyone, the audience, the residents, the employees, and this board, and uh, the executive, past executive director. 
it's very emotional. Thing is, people have the document of the OIG report and it keeps getting thrown in our face. I appreciate you reading it, but I would also appreciate you read the answers to it, which is in the back of the report. Now, the board also nominated this man, Carl Rowe, to be the interim head of the City of Las Vegas Housing Authority. You may recognize his face. He recently left the Clark County Housing Authority, and he actually was the executive director of the City Housing Authority here from 1990 to 1994. As we stepped out of here just a few moments ago, that was only a nomination. His appointment uh, as interim director has not been approved yet. We'll step back inside, and if anything changes, we'll keep you posted. Reporting live from the City of Las Vegas Housing Authority downtown, I'm Mark Sayer. Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Mark. Four unlicensed contractors here in the Valley have been cited in a sting operation. Investigators with the Nevada State Contractors Board conducted the operation Thursday in southwest Las Vegas. The four were given criminal misdemeanor citations. Homeowners should not use unlicensed contractors. To find out if a contractor has a license, call the Contractors Board or go to our website and we'll link you to their website. Today is the final day for residents of Clark County to vote early early for Tuesday's primary election. Voters have until about 9 o'clock tonight to stop by one of the many early voting sites around the valley. More than 7,800 voters went to the polls yesterday. That's the largest single day turnout so far. That brings the total number of early voters to just under 70,000. Early voting's gone very well. And one thing that makes it go well is any voter can vote at any location. So we don't have problems with people showing up at the wrong place like you do sometimes on election day. We have information on our website about early voting. We also have profiles of the candidates if you want to check it out. Join Eyewitness News for complete coverage of the primary election this Tuesday, starting at 7 o'clock in the evening. Eyewitness News will provide in-depth, continuing coverage of the election with analysis and, of course, all the latest results. Then at 10 o'clock on Channel 8, complete live team coverage in an Eyewitness News special report with a wrap-up of all the races and a look ahead to the general election. We will, of course, have continuing coverage on Eyewitness News at 11 o'clock. Check our website for updated results as well. Former Clark County Commissioner Lance Malone said he couldn't get a fair trial here in the G-Sting political corruption case. Hear what the judge said. And that lush landscaping along the Las Vegas Strip could be torn out to make room for a bus express lane. And I'm Kevin Janison of the Channel A Weather Office. Just seems like we can't get any rain in the Las Vegas Valley. We'll tell you what that means as far as the weekend goes, if there are other opportunities. But as we head off to break, here's what's happening on the neighborhood Doppler radar. It's all happening up in eastern parts of Lincoln County or in Arizona. Moving our way, we'll let you know. Forecast is coming up. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 4 with Gary Waddell. Paula Francis and Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Janison. It's not just news, it's Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The stage is about to be set. Who will represent your political party in the race for Nevada's most powerful offices? Join Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, and the entire Eyewitness News election team for complete live coverage as the votes roll in. Who will win this important primary and continue their campaign to work for you? Coverage begins Tuesday at 7 on Las Vegas 1, then at 10 on Channel 8, with continuous updates on KLASTV.com. It's not just an election, it's Nevada's future. I'm sorry, Jake was next. Yeah, well, we're next now. Well, 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 I washed all the dishes and I did a lot more. I even bought the dinner at the grocery store. And now, Mom, you're buying the key next door. This little girl's gonna rock it. I left some biscuits for the pup. I put fresh water in his cup. And now I'm all gonna... We can make your dreams come true. Walker Summer Clearance just got a lot hotter. Buy now with no finance charge and no accrued interest till 2008. Other stores can't do that. And other stores can't match our prices. Choose from this five-piece dining group with upholstered side chairs or the matching china cabinet. Save $400, your choice, just $6.99. Save 33 to 70% store-wide and get our best finance terms ever. How do they do it? Furniture. That's all we do. We got it. It's hard to explain the feeling. The questions. The uncertainty. So I met the doctor. They were 100% thorough. The baby's heartbeat was strong. I was not going to let this thing beat me. They went over the procedure. Push, push, push. They ran tests. You can't plan for an accident. But you're in good hands. I had hope. You always hope. And when they believe, 
you believe? I'm going to make it, because I'm strong. It makes you stronger. This is a life. A tiny, fragile life. Feel the power. Hurry to the massive model year end emergency liquidation. Exclusively at Fairway Chevrolet. All credit applications accepted. No vehicles withheld. All prices slashed. Check out these special discounted Chevy. Silverados from 12.7. Trailblazers from 17.7. Cobalt from 9.7. And economical avenues from 7.7. And you can still get 0% interest-free financing on new Chevrolets. Now at the number one Chevy store in Vegas. Fairway Chevrolet. 3100 East Sahara. Low price powerhouse. It is a cutthroat business. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 4. It's not just news, it's Eyewitness News. Police need help identifying a sexual assault suspect. Here's a drawing of the man. He is cons considered to be Hispanic in his late 20s, between 5'3 to 5'5, about 160 pounds. Police say he has long, dark hair, and it was pulled into a ponytail during the assault. Metro detectives say the man attacked a 25-year-old woman on July 28th on Jones near US 95. The victim was able to fight him off and scream for help. The fled on foot. If you have information, call Metro at 229-3766. A former Clark County Commissioner will be tried right here in Clark County for the G-Sting political corruption case. A federal judge rejected a request from Lance Malone's attorney to change the venue of the trial. The attorney had argued that media coverage of the case made it impossible to have a fair trial in Clark County. The judge agreed that media attention has been extensive but did not believe it would deprive Malone of a fair trial. Malone is accused of carrying bribes between strip club owner Mike Gallardi and former county commissioners Mary Kincaid Chauncey and Dario Herrera. Well, we all know how packed the Las Vegas Strip can get, but a new plan would create an express lane right down the middle of that busy street. You're looking at a live picture of the Strip from Sky Witness 8. Regional Transportation Commission's looking at replacing the landscaping in the median of the Strip with bus-only lanes. That would provide a way for buses to bypass traffic tie-ups. The new bus lanes would extend from Sunset Road on the south to Sahara on the north. The RTC wants to have the new route along the Strip hook up with the fixed guideway system. That project is a $980 million rapid transit bus line that could ultimately stretch from Henderson to North Las Vegas. It's estimated that more than 100,000 people would ride the express bus line on the Strip. Hundreds of Clark County school teachers and students will benefit from the Tools for Teachers drive being carried out by Channel 8 and our Community Pride partners. Volunteers are collecting school supplies this afternoon at the Office Depot on Eastern and Silverado Ranch. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Anchor Colleen May is there. Colleen, how's it going? It's going great, Gary. We're here at the Office Depot on Eastern near Silverado Ranch. Just one of nearly a dozen places where you can drop off supplies until 7 o'clock tonight. Here's something interesting. Did you know that Clark County teachers spend on average $1,200 of their own money buying supplies every year? That's why this drive is so important. And people have been so great today. Take a look at what we've, what we've collected here at this Office Depot. People have been so generous dropping off bags of supplies like this. And as my photographer Lee pans back, you can see dozens and dozens of school supplies. In fact, we think we've collected thousands. It's really important. There's lots of supplies here you can still contribute. Joining us live for an interview is the kindergarten teacher, Joy Ruby. She has used the teacher exchange. Joy, basically it works. You're able to go into warehouse and get some of these supplies. Why is it so important? Well, because we supply the things not only in our classroom, but to the children who need the supplies for home, to do their homework and to make their education, you know, more important and so they come into our room and they see all of these things and when you get, say to them this is yours that you get to keep their faces just light up and they're going wow you know and this comes out of our own pocket usually so now we go to the teacher exchange and we can get a lot of these things we do math games with playing cards you know you need when you have 30 children you need 15 decks of playing cards. Well, we can go to the teacher exchange and get them. When we play other math games, we have dice, and we can go to the teacher exchange and get the dice so every child has something that they can use and hold themselves, and it doesn't cost us any money. So it's great. Joy Ruby, kindergarten teacher, thank you for all your hard work. There is still time to donate to our program until 7 o'clock tonight. We have a list of locations on our website at KLAS TV, and we will have a update, an update tonight at 4.30. Reporting live, I'm Colleen May, Channel 8 Eyewitness News.
a good program. It is. That's great. Kevin is here Friday. Very important stuff. Exactly. I'm ready. I've been sweating all week to give you this one, and now the sweat is gone because the air mass has dried out considerably. Remember how humid it was? In fact, we started this week around 3%, went up to 30%, and now we're back down to 9% relative humidity in some neighborhoods. With all that moisture knocking on Clark County's door, it just won't come in. It's stuck in Arizona. Outside the valley, you can see how dry things are west of town, but go east closer to the moisture, and you can see the relative humidity values generally in the mid-20% range. Right now, Valley View in Washington, that neighborhood, 100 103 degrees, 11 percent. They're blowing at 7, having gusted to 22. And Horizon and Greenway and Henderson, that neighborhood at 103. A little more wind there for the time being. Their peak gust 23, but humidity only 12 percent. Hot again today, but today it was more of a dry heat for a tongue firmly planted in cheek there. 108 near Eastern and Charleston, also up near Cary and Hollywood. Only 99 as you go across the valley, about 3,000 feet in elevation. Mountain at 81, Pahrump peaked at 104. Laughlin a degree cooler, a little more moisture down there. So far in McCarran, the mercury is maxed out at 105. 86 was the muggy morning low before the air mass started to dry out. And the air quality today, again in the good category. So we've been on a roll there as well. We'll slide on over to the satellite picture of the valley, of course, right here. And <laughs> look at all this moisture. It's moving almost due north and then peeling off to the northeast. Like, you know, I think we'll go visit Southern Nevada. Uh, maybe not. And it goes into Utah. And that's pretty much going to be the rule this weekend. If anything, the moisture is going to shift a little farther to the east. And as it does, we'll dry out even more. And just other than a few afternoon clouds, it's going to be smooth sailing. Scattered meteors after midnight tonight. The peak of the persists meteor shower both tonight and tomorrow night. 103 tomorrow. We'll call it mostly sunny. We'll get a couple of fair weather clouds, but that should be it. And a look ahead at your seven-day forecast now. You know, this doesn't look too bad. Couple of clouds, highs in the lower 100s, overnight lows around 80 degrees. Feeling pretty comfortable, not too hot, not too humid. <sighs> Tastes great, less filling, Gary and Paula. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. More than a thousand kids in Las Vegas have new bike helmets today. We'll show you a community effort to keep them safe coming up. A new treatment for lung cancer patients could make the removal of tumors virtually painless. That story's coming up in Medical Breakthroughs. Breaking news, email alerts sent to you at home, work, or on your cell phone. Log on to KLASTV.com and sign up today. Neighborhood weather on Channel 8 Eyewitness News is brought to you by Sunburst Shutters. Stand out, even when you're sitting down. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. The time has come to truly save. Lazy Boy Furniture Gallery's factory authorized clearance. Save up to 50% throughout the store. Hurry in, sale ends soon. Wow, that hot fudge brownie blast looks great. Oh, it is, it's really good. Could I get a bite? Yeah, this one I had already planned on eating, so. Okay. This one is, um, just doesn't feel right. This isn't really a representative sample. I'm not doing a survey, it just... Now, this one is a perfect sample of the Hot Fudge Brownie Blast. It's got a little of everything, so right. that's for me. Hot Fudge Brownie Blast, new at Sonic. The taste of real brownies and hot fudge on Sonic's classic chocolatey treat. Get one tonight because Sonic's open till at least midnight. Announcing the Subaru All-Wheel Deal Model Year Clearance. There's never been a better time to buy the Subaru Outback and Forester. Right now, get an Outback 2.5i with amazing 0% APR financing and $2,000 cash back. The All-Wheel Drive Outback and Forester. Both are great alternatives to gas-guzzling SUVs, and they have a five-star crash test rating. Every day is a winding Hurry, 0% APR financing and $2,000 cash back in September 5th. Every day. Healthy lifestyle, healthy choices, health plan of Nevada, because good health takes a good plan. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef. Broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees and served sizzling. So the last bite stays as hot and delicious as the first. 
Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Life too short to eat anywhere else. Some Valley kids got a gift that could save their lives today. Think First Nevada handed out more than a thousand bicycles and helmets. The organization also went over safety tips and habits they hope prevent those kids from suffering injuries while on bikes or skateboards. The program was sponsored by Rhodes Ranch. It was held at the recreational club there. Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer for both men and women in the U.S. The only treatment to remove cancerous tumors is a painful and difficult surgery. But now doctors have found a painless way to treat patients who don't qualify for surgery. Here's tonight's Medical Breakthroughs report. Joanne Schwab not only beats stage one lung cancer. Anything else? She feels great and is working every day. When you hear cancer, that's a death sentence and especially lung cancer. Joanne wasn't a candidate for major surgery because it would have caused too much damage to her already frail lung. So doctors turned to a new treatment called CyberKnife. We're amazed by what it can accomplish. The CyberKnife is a robotic arm with a radiation device on the end. Patients lie on a table and the machine tracks the tumor as they breathe with small gold seeds. They're implanted around the tumor during a biopsy. The system is so precise, patients can receive three times the normal amount of radiation. We can target the beam and follow the tumor, therefore only delivering the radiation to the tumor and not to the normal lung. Instead of six weeks of standard radiation, it takes just three CyberKnife treatments for one or two weeks to make tumors like this black spot disappear. There's no pain and no real side effects. The major concern of the patients that have had the CyberKnife is whether they've been treated at all because the side effects have been so minimal. It worked on Joanne. Her cancer is gone, and she hopes it can also help some of the 170,000 people who die from this deadly cancer each year. The CyberKnife radiation system can also be used on patients with pancreatic and liver tumors. Doctors still view surgery as the best option for stage one lung cancer. For more information, check out our website, klastv.com. Scroll down the health tab and click on medical breakthroughs. Or you can send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, write lung cancer on the front. Gary? Paula, thank you. Well, you have to be 21 to buy liquor in the store, so some kids are turning to the internet to get their alcohol. We'll look at the problem in Eight on Your Side in about 10 minutes. Now here's Charlotte Evans with a look at what else is ahead on Eyewitness News at 4.30. Gary, after travelers learned about yesterday's terrorism plot, more people are on edge. We'll take a look at travel anxiety and how to ease some of your concerns. And are you ready for football? Justin Cooper has a look at this afternoon's game between New England and Atlanta. Plus, we have much more local news coming up on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live at 4.30 next. The easiest way to find out what's happening this election year is at KLASTV.com. On the home page, click on the Nevada Vote for side-by-side -side comparisons of the candidates and where they stand on the issues important to you. Eyewitness news reports covering every twist in this campaign season and commentary from the journalists who know Nevada politics inside out. Everything you'll need to know to make your vote matter. And it's all in one place. KLASTV.com. It's not just an election. It's Nevada's future. Closed captioning of Eyewitness News is brought to you by the Maternity Center at Spring Valley Hospital, featuring enhanced maternity and nursery services and all private rooms.